Hey everyone, thank you for taking 10 minutes to get up to speed on world events. For CNN 10, I'm Carl Mazus. A natural disaster in the U.S. state of Alabama headlines our show today. Lee County, which is in the eastern part of the state, was struck by tornadoes on Sunday afternoon. Just before 3 o'clock Eastern Time, the area received its first tornado warning, an official alert that means a tornado has been seen or identified by radar. The first reports of damage in Lee County came just five minutes later, indicating that people there had barely any time at all to take shelter. There was a second tornado warning about half an hour later and more reports of damage 13 minutes after that. The National Weather Service says in all, at least 12 tornadoes touched down in Alabama and Georgia on Sunday. Lee County, Alabama Sheriff Jay Jones called the destruction catastrophic. Houses completely destroyed, uh, homes just basically just slabs left where one stood a home. Um, massive damage, uh, some of the uh, area has in specific areas, the, the contents of one residence, uh, we know for a fact was located over a thousand yards away. At least 23 people were killed. It was Alabama's deadliest day for tornadoes since 2011. Dozens of homes were lost, businesses were damaged, parts of a school were hit. A shelter was set up on Sunday at a local Baptist church and dozens of people took advantage of it. Across the state border in Talbot County, Georgia, emergency officials say at least 15 structures were destroyed, including an apartment building and some homes. The pastor of a church there says it hit so quickly that people couldn't have planned for it. States of emergency were declared in Alabama and Georgia to speed up money and assistance to those who need it. Private donations and offers to help were also coming in from all around the affected areas. This is a two-dimensional look at a storm on radar, but meteorologists see a tornado. But what is it exactly that meteorologists see? Well, let's take a look. The yellow and green colors you see here are going to be your very heavy rain in the storm. The red color indicates your hail core. And then all the way down there, the purple circle, that's where your tornado is going to be. Meteorologists often refer to it as the hook echo because of the hook shape that it ends up taking. But these aren't the only features we look for. We also have to take a look at the winds inside the storm. Imagine this flagpole was inside of our storm and the flags going all the way up to the very top of the cloud. The thing is the wind changes direction as you go up. So this naturally creates that rotation necessary for funnel clouds and also even tornadoes. So now let's take a look at the base of that storm. What you have is you have very warm inflow, warm air coming into the storm and rising because that's what warm air does. It goes up, but you also have cold air coming down from the tops of the clouds and sinking all the way down towards the base. Now together, these help to create wind shear down near the perimeter, and that is what helps create some of the more violent tornadoes. Now, what if your tornado has been on the ground for at least a little bit? Then you start to get this, the debris cloud, which is essentially a collection of all of the stuff the tornado has been able to pick up, everything from dust to trees to even homes. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2018 CNN Hero of the Year is Dr. Dr. Ricardo, Ricardo Punchong. We are here tonight because People believe in us. An incredible night, and when he returned to Peru, crowds gathered to greet Ricardo at the airport. He's been hailed a national hero. For years, Ricardo dreamt of building a brand new shelter on land he'd secured. This land. Now, he says, thanks to the $100,000 CNN prize and donations made to his nonprofit, he can start construction. The new space will allow him to triple the number of people he can serve. The kids inspires me every day. They are fighters, warriors. Really, they are heroes. Remembering the 2018 CNN Hero of the Year, Dr. Punchong and the other heroes like him are everyday people whose action is changing their communities. This could be through mentoring young people. It could be through helping make sure every poor child in a community has a new bed to sleep on. Nominations are now open for 2019 CNN Heroes. You can tell the network about someone who inspires you by visiting CNN.com slash heroes. 10 second trivia. When an object travels faster than 760 miles per hour at sea level, it's said to be what? At Mach 2, supersonic, hypersonic, or at terminal velocity? 
760 miles per hour is about the speed of sound at sea level, so if you're going faster than that, you're supersonic. Above sea level, sound doesn't travel as fast, so planes don't have to be going quite as quickly to be supersonic. Still, Mach 1, or the speed of sound, is not something that's reached by passenger planes. At least, not anymore. This is the Concorde. It's being remembered this week because it just marked the 50th anniversary of its first test flight. You can only see it in museums now, not the skies, but when it was airborne, the Concorde could cruise at twice the speed of sound. Mach 2, 1,350 miles per hour. Flying on it is said to have been extremely noisy, and it was expensive. A round-trip ticket between London and New York could set you back $16,000, and that was 20 years ago. But before its age, operating costs, and a single but horrific accident led to its last flight, the Concorde was the ultimate jet for jet setters. Imagine being able to fly 60,000 feet above the ground at more than twice the speed of sound, traveling from New York to London in just three and a half hours at the height of luxury. It might sound futuristic, but this feat of engineering became a reality 50 years ago. At an airfield in southwest France on March 2nd, 1969, Concorde 1 took flight, proving that commercial supersonic air travel was possible. It had taken an unprecedented collaboration between Britain and France to realize the project, which was reflected in its name, a word used in both French and English to mean agreement, harmony and union. Its construction was one of the most complex in aviation history, and the now iconic design was actually the result of cutting-edge engineering. For example, the Delta Wing, designed to minimize drag at high speed but maximize lift at takeoff, was the result of over 5,000 hours of wind tunnel testing. Super powerful engines were needed to accelerate to Concorde's 1,350 mile per hour supersonic speed, and it remains the only passenger plane ever to have used turbojet engines with afterburners. The extra long nose cone had to be specially designed to droop so the pilots could see during steep takeoff and landing angles. The result of all this innovation was a plane that when it entered service in 1976, could fly five miles higher and 800 miles per hour faster than the competition. But supersonic speed was anything but super cheap. With around 100 seats and superior service, Concorde quickly established an aura of exclusivity. Royals, including the Queen, were among its notable passengers. And ultimately, despite its engineering excellence, Concorde's expense contributed to its downfall. Economic issues were compounded in 2000 by a crash in Paris, killing everyone on board and four on the ground. And despite briefly resuming service a year later, Concorde made its last commercial flight from New York to London in 2003. Though the supersonic dream was a reality for just 27 years, it lives on in aviation history. Every fall, a number of publications give advice on how to winterproof your home. But who could have expected this? Now you see it, nice little house. Now you see it covered in ice. It's located in upstate New York near the shore of Lake Ontario. The heavy winds of a storm blew ice all over the house, encasing it. The woman who lives there says it's four feet deep in some places. Thankfully, she can still get in and out through a back door. When it comes to cold, if you don't love it, you're going to list it and house hunt for something farther south. A fixer upper is better than a freezer upper, and no matter how good its bones are, a flip is a flop. If this old house is a vanilla ice project you didn't design on a dime, you'll want to be trading spaces in no time. I'm Carl Azus for CNN 10.